So good morning and welcome everyone. I hope everyone is having a great start to your March break. Um, thank you for joining us for our first session in our Shared Alumni March Break Camp, uh, Creating Art with Code. Um, we're very excited to be hosting our March Break Camp again this year uh, for the next few days. So um, for all those of you who don't know me, my name is Alicia and I work here at Sheridan. We are so excited to have mobile computing grads with us and my friends, uh, Samina and Billa. Uh, they will be with us today leading you through a computer code coding workshop for beginners. So awesome. We can't wait. Uh, today, you'll be introduced to coding concepts such as variables and loops by creating digital art through code. Um, so this event will be recorded. Uh, so with your parents' permission, you are welcome to turn on your camera, unmute. Um, it's meant to be an interactive and fun session, um, but only with your parents' permission. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, you can also use the chat box down below. Uh, so with all that being said, I think I will now get started. I'm going to turn it over to Samina and Villa. Welcome. Hey, everyone. Can everyone see my screen? Maybe you can let me know in the chat. We're all good? I think so, yeah. All right, cool. So um, just to tell a little bit more about ourselves. So Samina, this is me. And Bilha, do you want to say just a little hi? That's Hello. Bilha, <laughs> All right. I just want you to get to know Bilha pretty well because she'll be helping me out um, with any questions you have in the chat. So if there's something that we're doing during the session and you might have a question, Bilha's going to be watching the chat and trying to help you out the best as possible. If a lot of people are having maybe the similar issue, then we'll um, definitely take some time and I'll address it as well. Um, but a, a little bit more about us. So we studied computer science, so coding and programming in school, and now uh, we're out of school and we're working and we're we're programmers. Um, so that's just a little bit of, uh, just a little bit about us. Um, and I know for Bilha, she learned programming when she entered college. So she like both of us didn't learn when we were your age. So a lot of you are really young. So it's really cool that you have a chance to to get to know about coding and what it is today. And if you already know about coding and programming languages, and all that jazz, that's already pretty amazing. I wish um, I wish that was the case for me when I was younger. <laughs> all right, so the first thing I wanna start off is just with a question. So what is coding? I want you to just put in the chat what you think it is. Maybe you have an idea or maybe you don't know at all. I want you to take a guess. So I, I'm gonna watch the chat. I'm gonna see what you think coding is. Take a wild guess. Um, and just let me know what you what you think this word even means. So if does everybody have access to the chat? Just give a one word, maybe you have three words of what coding is, just put it in the chat and hopefully I'll read some out some of your answers. Um, and uh, Bilha, feel free to put what you think coding is as well. <laughs> what do you think coding is? Or if you would uh, prefer to unmute, unmute, and you can um, yeah. talk as well. We can, I think we have the raise, do we have like a raise hand feature? We should, yeah. Yeah, feel free. So let's read some uh, answers here. I do number coding and sometimes it can be hard. Yeah, coding can be hard sometimes. That's definitely something that comes to my mind when I think of coding. <laughs> Um, coding is when you can create something on your computer, so sort of like a project. That's I like I like where you're going with that one, Seb. Um, programming websites is technically coding. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. coding. Engineering in STEM. Okay, so it's like a kind of sciencey type of field. Okay, cool. Maybe we'll shift that uh that concept a little bit today. A way to tell computers what to do. I love that answer. That's great, Alex. Um, I think coding is programming. Okay, what is programming? <laughs> I'll, I'll ask another question, Samantha. I think coding is sometimes when you can create by programming it. Cool. So programming and coding seems to be like a similar word. Coding is when you can create games or projects. You can definitely do that with coding. A way to program tech to do what you want. Great. Yep, that's exactly it. Uh, programs, games, projects, making your own website. Yep, all you can do with coding. 
Coding is creating a world of your own. Ooh, Leslie, I love, I love that. A platform to create or program honestly anything you like. Joel, awesome. I think everyone's on the same page here, which is really great. Um, coding is where you have to put blocks and move things and more. Yeah, if you're also similar with, if you've ever um, done scratch coding before, that's like a website where a lot of people might learn coding for the first time. That's definitely, um, yeah. Did you do scratch, Leslie? Yeah. So um, that's definitely where you're moving blocks uh, and they represent code. So that's really great that you um, had the chance to do that. Might be very helpful here today. Um, so I think a lot of you know what coding is. I, I think, I think we, we should just call it a day, but um, no, we're going to keep going. Um, but yeah, coding is pretty much, I'm going to get a bit, a bit technical. Yeah, Scratch can also be hard sometimes, definitely. Um, so um, what is coding? So I'm going to give more of a little uh, elaborate on some of the things you've said, but based on the chat, everyone said something right about coding. Every, everything that you said has truth to what coding is. So coding is the process of writing instructions for a computer to follow. So I think somebody said it's basically telling a computer what you want it to do. That's what coding is. For in the most simplest terms, that we're telling this little robot or whatever the computer to, to do what we want it to do. Um, and it's kind of like a recipe for the computer. So the computer will look at your code and be like, okay, I know what you want me to do. I'm, I'm gonna go do that. So the instructions tell the computer what to do and the order to do it, which is also really important. So just from a very high level point of view, coding is just telling our computer to do what we want it to do, which I think a lot of you pretty much understand that bit. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna shift off the slideshow because we're actually gonna do some coding today, but I'm just gonna give some reminders before I really get into that kind of stuff. So, one thing is, I know somebody mentioned scratch is hard sometimes. I guess the general thing to tell you about coding is that it can get frustrating and you can become lost. That is a totally normal thing that happens when you're trying to learn how to code. And even for Belha and I, we, we've learned how to code, but we still find it really hard. Um, so we get lost too. So that's totally fine. Um, a couple of things, I think Alicia sent a guide for you all. It's cool if you have that with you when you're doing a session, so you can have it open. I definitely recommend it. I'll go over it, over it a little bit um, after I finish the slide. And again, if you're having some trouble, the guide is also in the chat, so a little update for you. So maybe you wanna download it and have it with you. And then also, if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand or also just a message in the chat and Bill Hull will be monitoring it. Um, and she'll try to answer your questions as best as possible as well. Um, and then if you're thinking that things are too hard, again, that's totally fine. We're just starting out. Some of you may have already done some coding before through Scratch, which is great, but for some of you, it may be a very first time. So again, another thing about coding is it just takes practice. And usually for me, when I've taught kids to code, I you know, teach them every week, or we really take it a step at a time. Because we have an hour, we might be doing, trying to go over a lot of new concepts, and you might be like, whoa, we just learned one new thing, and now we're learning another new thing. So that's totally fine. Um, if, if it's really, really too hard, really just try to follow along and see what I'm doing, um, and try to be as helpful in the chat as possible, letting me know like, oh, hey, what we just did that. Why did you do that? So it's good to ask questions. Um, Another thing is at the end, I want you to do your own coding. So I want you to try to share your work, hopefully through the chat as well. So we're gonna be creating some art through code. So I wanna share, I want you to share some of the art that you've done. Um, so that's hopefully, again, I want you to use the chat as much as possible, get on mute, uh, get off mute and really just um, ask your questions and participate. Uh, so that's how we're gonna have a really fun session, right? Um, that's it from the slide. I think we should just get started. And the way that I'm first just going to get started is I'm going to show you what people have created using some of the things that we're doing today. Now, we're, I think if somebody's on mute, just make sure that you, um, sorry, if somebody's off mute, just make sure you're um, And maybe we can get some help if Bilha or um, Alicia, if somebody's on. So I'm gonna show you some of the things that people have created using some of the code that we're gonna to learn today. Now, 
you're not going to be able to do this right away, but you're going to start building the basics to try to get here. So somebody created this rocket game and you can see what's happening here. Right now I've zero lives because I was playing before. So if I got hit once more, game over. Somebody created this through code and I can actually show you the code that somebody wrote. Now this might look a little scary at first, but don't worry, we're not going to be writing this kind of code right now, but this is this is something that you can make if you keep practicing um, and you could do this through code. But another thing is other than just games, so somebody mentioned we can create games. This is a game made through code. Now there's other things that people like to do. Maybe, so again, maybe some people like Flappy Bird. You can create Flappy Bird using some of the things that we're gonna do today. I think Flappy Bird, mostly people played on their phone, right? It's an old game. Do people remember it or am I too old? <laughs> All right, cool. It's like some people remember it. Some people like to create patterns. So this is like another type of art that people like to make through code. So I know somebody said that code is just like for engineering and STEM. So yeah, we can have code to build like, you know, health applications and all this other very technical stuff. But some people like to use code to make some art. Um, so this is an art piece that somebody made as well. Oh, you made Flappy Bird in Scratch? That sounds a little complicated. Joel, we can hopefully, uh, if you have that up, maybe you could share it at the end. Um, some people like to create patterns. You know, they like to create patterns with code. So another way we can use art. So it's not just science things we can use code for. We can also explore how we can use code to create art. So this was all created through code. Look at all the words and instructions for the computer to create this pattern. Yeah, takes a while to load sometimes. And then somebody made a forest. We created a program to create this forest here with all these trees and trees of different sizes. So that was also created through code. Do I have to prove it to you again? Here, all these words to create this drawing right here. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? Let me know. Oh yeah, Samantha, it's so fun. And Joel, wow. Cool. Yeah, that's a lot of, it's a, it's might seem a lot of code in the beginning, but you'll realize um, as you start writing code that it gets quite large. Um, so you'll be writing a lot of lines. And then look at this one. I think this one's pretty cool too. So I like to see how people create, you know, I think a lot of other stuff is really fun. You know, being able to create really complex things like robots. Yeah, that's really cool. But I like art, seeing art how it's made through code. I think that's really, really cool. And I wanted you to explore that because I think you're already creating art right now, right? You're creating art through a pencil and a paper, but your new tool will be code. And then you can create art that way as well. So I think everyone's gotten a little bit of an idea of what you can do with code here. So we're actually gonna do some of this stuff ourselves. I'm gonna give you an example here of what we're gonna do today. So we're going to start it a little bit simple. You know, maybe not as cool as the things that I've just shown you, but we're going to be creating this scene of this house right here. Now, some of you might pick it up really fast. We're going to learn how to create these shapes, how we can use colors. Um, and some of you might be picking it up really fast and you want to maybe take a house to a new level. Maybe you're, you're ahead of me and you've already created a house and you want to create fences or you want to make it even more elaborate, which is totally cool. Um, if you're, if you look at the guide, this is the guide that you, that Alicia has attached in the chat. If you download it, here are some things, if you're finding things to be really easy and you want to go and do some other cool things, I've included some challenges like create this lamp. We're also going to do this a little later on and we're going to turn the lamp on and off. So we're going to have a little bit of, you know, code there to, you know, turn off the light and turn on the light. And then we also have a little fun challenge I have for you. If you're finding things, you know, you're like, oh, I want to, you know, do something else. I've done the house. Uh, I think I get it now. Maybe another cool challenge and something I want to see people try to attempt, hopefully if you have time, is try to create a portrait through code using some of the things that I've, I'm going to be teaching you. Um, and then put that portrait into the chat and I want to see what you make. So here are some examples of what people have made through code. All right, now I've shown you enough examples. I've kind of explained this guide here. So uh, maybe you don't remember how to create a circle. You can come to the 
come to the part in the guide where it says, how do I create an oval or circle? Okay. Can I just get a quick, I'm going to ask a quick question. Has, have, has everybody set up, um, there's this website here. Has everybody set up um, their account on this website? Just let me know in the chat. I'll put a one if you already have and put a two if you haven't, or just write yes or no. No, so we have a lot of no's. Okay, we have a, a couple of yeses as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over it really quickly for the people who haven't set up their account because it's really important for you to set up your account for you to follow along. So I'm going to be putting, I also have included this in the guide. So yes, Alicia has put in the link to the website. So I want you to click that link. So you'll take this link right here. And you'll go to the website. For you, you won't see me uh, like your login. You'll actually see a little, um, you'll see a little sign at the top that says sign up. Sorry, that's not super clear, but like when you click on this website at the top, there's this button to sign up. And we're creating an account because then you can save your work. Because if you don't create an account, you can't save your work and you can't come back to it. Um, so if anybody needs some help setting up, I'll just give a couple of minutes for people to do that. Cool, if you've already signed up, I just want you to be on this page right here. We just want to stay on this page. Yep, Leslie, you have a question. You can come off mute if it's easier to ask your question through the mic, or you can put it in the chat. So where is the link? It's, it's in the guide, Alex, and then Alicia has also put it in the chat right there. Can you see it? So also if parents are helping out, you can see in the guide here, we've had a couple um, of questions. Hello? Yep, Leslie. How do you like, like later on, can, can you like create pins? Like, can you like create like, are we gonna be like, like are you like, and eventually like, can you like put something on a pin? Put something on a pin? Like a, like an image or something. Like if I wanted to go and I wanted to get the house on there and I wanted to put it on the pin, can I do that? Hmm, put an image on there. How about we do that when we create the house? So once we get this part, we can talk about that bit. Maybe if you could show me an example of what you wanna do. I'm not quite sure what you mean by pin. Okay. Yeah. But we'll, we're going to get to the house. I just want people to be set up and then we'll get to that. And then if you need help adding something to your house, um, let me know. All right. So is anyone not set up and still need some help? We're going to get started in a minute. So if you're on this page, you're all ready to go. If you're logged in, if you see your username here and you're on this page over here, that's how you know you're ready to go. Cool. Hopefully I get your name right, Janaya. So you're logged in, that's good to hear. Paula's good to go. The Sohan, Master, cool. This is, this is what I like to hear, Ethan's in. All good to hear. So if you're, again, if you're having any trouble, that's totally fine. Um, if your background is green, that's all right. We can change the color of your background later. Um, but yeah, if, again, if you're having any trouble, let us know in the chat, Bilha will try to help you out. All right, I think we're ready to get started. So the first thing I wanna do, so if you're on this page, again, this is a really, I'm gonna just close some of the tabs that I have here of all the cool stuff that I was showing you before. So, okay. Oh, it's Kayleen, you're using your mother's account. Okay, Paula, hopefully I remember. <laughs> you're like, why are you calling me by my mom's name? Okay. Um, 
No problem. So the first thing I want to do, so if everybody's on this page, then again, that's a great sign. That's exactly where we want to be. The first thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to tell you what, what is this part of the page doing? What is this part of the page doing? We're going to go over all of that right now. So now that you've, re you've created an account and you've reached this page, the first thing we're going to explore is how to navigate this page. And hopefully you are seeing it. Um, but if you're not, just follow along for now. And then hopefully um, when we have a moment, we can also help you out. So this page you can see is divided into two sections over here. So in this section, you can see, this is where we will write our code. This is the code that we'll be writing so that we can see something when over here in our under our preview. You don't see anything in preview just yet, but again, whatever you wanna put in your drawing, you'll write in the code over here, and then you're gonna actually see it right here. So I'm just going to also tell you what these buttons are at the top. Now, just before we do that, if, if you don't have this check mark selected, I would really recommend that you do that. So that means you don't have to uh, click these buttons every time. So if you can just go ahead and click this um, check mark next to auto refresh, that means every time you add a line of code or you update it, you'll see the changes right away. Now, this button is to play. Whatever we've written in our code will actually happen. But if you already have auto refresh clicked, um, then you're good to go. You should see those changes right away. The stop is mostly helpful. We're not going to really need it today, but the stop is helpful when you have some. So in our drawings, maybe you remember in the examples I showed you, we had some parts that were moving. So some people created moving things with their code. So if you have some things that are moving, and you don't want them to move anymore, then the stop is really helpful for that. But we're not really creating things that move just yet. That's a little bit more complicated. We're going to try to build some of the basics so that when we do um, create things that move, it'll make more sense to us. Right now, uh, nothing really interesting happening. We just have this gray background. So not really fun, right? But can everybody see this gray background when they hit play or if they have auto refresh? Can everyone see it? Yeah, okay. So we see this really boring gray background. I'm not really loving it. So maybe um, we're the first thing we're gonna wanna do is change that background, right? And I think maybe, uh, I think Joel saw a green background instead. So that's interesting. Um, and also you might be wondering what this, uh, what these random words are at the top. Um, it's just the name of your file. So um, this editor just gives it a silly name, a really random and silly name. So you don't have to change it for now, but if you want to change it, that's up to you. Um, maybe you want to call it something like, uh, like lesson one or something. I already have something called lesson one, so I'm just gonna call it lesson one. Okay, so I think it does everything make sense right now. So this is where we write our code. This is where we'll see our preview. I'm gonna show you what console does a little later on. We don't have to um, touch on that right now, but um, hopefully everybody agrees that maybe the first thing that we should do is change our background color. I'm not really liking the gray. I don't know if anyone's liking the gray, but if you like the gray, you can keep the gray. But right now you, can somebody tell me where we might well, change our background color? Gian, you can't follow? Is there something uh, particular that uh, maybe like you can let Bilha know in the chat and then she can try to help you out? Is there, if there's some um, specific question that you have. So the first thing that we wanna do is change our background color. Where do you think we can change our background color? So I wanna take this gray and I wanna create a different color. I think that's a really good guess, Sohan. Wherever it says background, maybe that's where we can set our background color. Now, I right now you might be wondering, what does the 220 mean? Now, I'm not gonna get super into it, but with colors, each color in the world, you can represent with a number. So that's actually why 220 is representing gray. But I'm gonna keep it a bit more simple for us. You have to first put in the quotations and then put in the color that you'd like to see. So maybe you want blue. So I want you to try putting in a color that you know, and I recommend putting it in lowercase. You might be wondering why. Um, it's just how our computer likes to read it. So it's like how it, it this is the way it likes to take its instructions. Gordon, what are the nines for? So try putting in a color that you'd like. Maybe it's red.
So once, hopefully, is everybody able to get a different color on their background? You can let me know in the chat. And also I'm seeing people nod with the cameras on. So that's really good to see. You're not able to. So where are the colors? So here's a couple of things that I want you to try out. First, I want you to just put in something like red. Try some of the basic colors. In the guide, I've also put in a little website that could be helpful. So if you wanna click the website, there are some color names that you can choose from. There are some silly colors. So there's blue, there's burly wood. You can put this. So basically in the quotations here, you really have to remember these quotations. I'll tell you what happens if I took the quotation out. This is what our console is for. It'll tell us if there's any error in our code. And when we take the quotation out, the computer will say something very technical, but I'll explain it to you. It says found a symbol that JavaScript doesn't recognize or didn't expect. So it's a little technical, but it's essentially saying there is a symbol that's that's not there or it's it's missing. So we want to put a quotation and then we want to write our color. If there's a color that you're trying to get and it's not working, let Belha know in the chat and she can um, hopefully tell you how to type it out. So here's an example I'll just put in the chat as well, if you wanted red. If the, if the, um, if the box has disappeared, again, please select, make sure that you have this auto refresh selected at the top. If I don't have auto refresh selected, See what happens when I change this to blue. I won't see it updated, but if I have auto refresh on, I should be able to maybe it will take um, you'll have to click the play button the first time, but everything I change from then on. Should get updated right here in my canvas. This is called the canvas. You might see the canvas. We created it right here. We're not going to get super into what this means or is doing, but you can probably understand this is where our canvas is and we can set the size of our canvas right here as well. Okay, blush pink isn't working. Another thing I'm gonna maybe just let people know is when you have, I'm gonna actually change my color to light blue, that's the color I want. But when I'm typing light blue, can you tell me what you notice here? When I typed out light blue, No spaces, exactly. We cannot put spaces. Why can't we put spaces? Again, it's just how our computer likes to take its instructions. All right, how's everyone doing? Blush pink is not working, so let's try it. Where's the blush pink here? Hmm. I see hot pink. Maybe I'm going to try hot pink. So that's how to write it. Lowercase and no spaces. Let's see. Blush. Ooh, I don't know if there's blush pink here. Is there a blush pink? So make sure you choose a color from, from here somewhere. Another way I'm going to show you how you can choose a color will be a bit later on, but it's also in the guide. I don't really want to um, explore that right now, but if you really want to explore all the colors, try to figure out what I've written in the guide. There's a way that you can um, choose really any color. I'll give a little hint right now to anyone who might want to explore it. But if you click, usually when you write a simple color like blue, you'll see this little blue square. When you click it, you can really choose different colors right here, but you'll see that if you're not familiar with this one, it's little, it's different codes for each color. We have different codes for each color. Cool, so everybody's picked their color. I think we're ready to, to move on is what I'm hearing. Now I'm gonna choose light blue and I'm gonna choose light blue because if you remember when, we, when I showed you how I created the house before, 
I'm going to show you this picture again because this is what we're going to be making. So we're going to be making this right here. So I want the I want the sky to be light blue, but if you want the sky to be a different color, it's your it's your canvas. You can you can choose whichever color you want. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a circle. Now I'm going to show you first how to create a circle. Now, if you want to type along with me, that'd be great. I'm going to be putting some numbers here and I'm going to explain what these numbers do, but I just want you to put four numbers here. You can put 100 like I have. Oh, is it laggy, Seth? Hopefully, I'll try to take some pauses in between, but I want you to type out what I've done right here. Let me know when you type that out. You should be able to see this circle on the screen. Does everybody have a circle? You can give me a thumbs up or you can, it says something is missing. Now, if there's something missing, you wanna take a look at, maybe you're missing this little semicolon at the end. So you wanna put in the semicolon. If you're missing a bracket, you wanna make sure that that bracket's there. It's really important that you, for instance, if I took this bracket out, hey, it's letting me know, you're missing this bracket after now that's a little bit technical, but you're, I think we understand where we're missing our bracket. So right now it says expected a bracket, but then it saw the semicolon. If the ellipse is not on the screen, we just wanna make sure that if, again, maybe the auto refresh isn't selected and try hitting the play button, try hitting this, this pink button right here. So, Another thing, Joel, is that we do not, here we included quotations, but Joel, we do not want to include quotations here. Not with the numbers. So we don't want these quotations. Yeah, cool. Now can you see the circle? Momina, if it's not working, like maybe you can, I like what Joel just did. You can just copy what you wrote and then you can put it in the chat so then we can let you know. My circle is an oval. So I'll, I'll, I think it's time to know what these numbers are doing. Now we're gonna fiddle around with each of these numbers and I want you to tell me what you see the numbers are doing. Now we're gonna start with this first number here. Okay, here, if people cannot see the circle, maybe you can, so Alex, I see a little uh, bracket there. You wanna make sure this is, I love how you're letting me know because I can then see maybe where we're going wrong. You want this circle, you have to create it between these brackets. If you create your circle outside of these brackets, can someone tell me what they see? No circle. So you have to make sure your circle is under this, under these curly braces. We call these curly braces. So everything you put in draw will actually be drawn. All right. Okay, Mumina, that one should be all right. Here, I'm gonna say, I'm going to paste this right here and try this one out. That should work. Okay, so Bill, how you'll be watching the chat. I'm going to be hopefully moving along. I think we can get this figured out with the folks in the chat. Okay. All right, so I want to tell you what these numbers are doing, because if we don't know what these numbers are doing, it's not going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to be fiddling around with these numbers, and then you're going to tell me what's happening to the circle. All right, so 
I'm going to start from zero here. This is what happens when I'm at zero. I'm going to move it to 20. What's happening here? Does anybody see? Maybe it's a little subtle. I'm going to move it to 30. It might be a bit laggy. I want you to try to fiddle around with the, num the first number here and tell me what you see. Try a number like 300. Okay. What happens when I have 200? Yes, the location of the circle is changing. So, but it is, the, it is moving. The circle is moving, but which way is it moving? Can someone tell me which way is moving? Okay, Lathe, you said to the right, that's close. Is it just moving to the right? What if I went to, to 100? Only horizontal, Patricia, I like what you said there. The first number will move your circle to the left or to the right. Now, if the first number is, okay, cool, you got it in the middle, nice. All right, so the first number moves it left and right. What do you then think, what is the second number doing? What do you think the second number would do? If we're moving left and right, what do you think this number is doing? Okay, it's, Sohan said moving it up. Alex said up and down, cool. Basil, yes, everyone's, everyone's on the right page here. The first number will move your circle left and right. The second number will move your circle up and down. Now, okay, that's, I think we've covered all the directions, left, right, up and down. What are the other numbers doing? Can somebody fiddle around with the numbers and let me know? Okay, Alex, you got a head there? You said it's the size. Basil, okay, cool, width and height, cool. But can someone tell me which one's the width and which one's the height? Is this one the height or is this one the height? And is this one the width or is this one the width? So I want you to tell me what, what is this third number doing first? Third is the height? Okay, I'm gonna try it out, Alex. Ooh, I think it's more of the width, don't you think so? So the third one, yes, the third one is the width and the fourth one is the height. So you'll see our circle isn't really looking like a circle anymore. If you want something to be a circle, what's the criteria? It needs to have the same width and the same height, right? So if you want a circle, just make sure that the width and the height are the same number. Yeah, no worries. This is how we learn. We learn by doing and we'll, oh, we'll remember, oh, maybe the, the third one isn't the height, it's the width actually. Okay, so I'm gonna take a moment for just to let you guys figure out how can we get this circle to the top like a sun. You know how in our, I just showed the house over here. I wanna try to get this right over here. I want to get the sun at the top right here. So try to fill with the numbers and let me know what numbers work for you to try to get this circle at the top. Once we get the circle at the top, we'll try to give it a yellow color. Samantha got it already? Cool. Yep. That's cool to know, Alex. If you just put a one, it's just a line. Okay, Joel. Hey, Joel. Um, do you want to get off mute and let me know what's what's going on? Mm 
Joel, are you there? Okay, Joel, can you copy this whole message that I sent you? And let's, for instance, you can just take out everything that's here and then just paste to what I sent you. Let me know if that works. You might have to click this pink play button. Okay, Paula, maybe your house is in the at the nighttime. That's cool. If, if folks have the sun up right there. Okay, Joel, it worked for you? Okay, Lace, you said those numbers worked for you. I'm gonna try it out. Cool, I like that. Now, if, these are, oh wait, no wait, these are 70s. I think I copied my other one. So I'm gonna try out lace here. Let's see what works. Copy the wrong one. Oops, let me try this. I'm gonna try 100, maybe Samantha's right here. 50, 100. 100. Cool. I'm just going to move it down a little bit. The Or actually, I'm going to make the sun a little smaller. So I'm going to maybe put like 70 height. Yeah, I'm going to have my sun just a bit smaller. All right, it, cool. Whatever sun that works for you is cool. But now we're going to add, I think the sun is usually a yellowish color. But if it's a moon for you, maybe you want to keep it white. So in order for us to actually add some color to our shape. You have to, this is really important. Again, everything that you write has to be between these curly braces. And if you want the to fill the color with a, fill the shape of the color, you have to do it right before you actually do your shape. So we wanna create a space and we, right before we created our circle. And I want you to write fill. And then I want you to write yellow. And then remember the semicolon at the end. So I'm also going to put this in the chat so you can take a look right there. But that's how we actually fill the color. And Ava, you had a question? Feel free to get off mute. When uh, I put day on the background, yeah. the whole square disappears. So here's another really important um, thing that I want to remind you. Make sure your background is the first thing that you do before you create your shape. Is it the first thing you're doing before you create the shape? Yes. So can you copy and send your code in the chat so I can just take a look? Do you know how to do that? So you just want to control copy and then put it in the chat. All right. Can you let me know if you've, um, yep. Another thing is, did you press play? I like how we're helping each other. Thanks, Janaya, for the, for the tip there. But yeah, if Ava, if you could put your code in the chat, that would be really helpful. So I can try to spot maybe what's happening that's going wrong. All right. For the folks who have already made their circle yellow, I want you to try to create the shape for our house over here. So our house, we're gonna start with something very simple. We're gonna create a big rectangle for our house. Now to use rectangle, it's very similar to our creating a circle. First, we're gonna write rect. And then I just start out with random numbers just so I can get a rectangle on the screen. And you'll see that our rectangle will take the same color as our circle until we change that color. 
So I want you to create a rectangle and I want you to try to get it similar to what I showed you before. So right here, similar to this, I want to create, so it's more of a square for me, but if you want to create a square from the rectangle, you just have to make sure you're within your height or the same. So I want you to try to get a rectangle of around this size on the bottom of the screen. Now the numbers do the same thing. This number will move your rectangle or your square to the right or to the left. This number will move it up and down and this number will make it big. Cool, so I'm gonna try this out right here. Um, bum, bum, bum. Hmm, Ava, you can't put it in the chat. Uh, is there something, is there a reason why you're not able to put it in the chat? Maybe um, if Alicia, if there's a way we can get a breakout room between Ava and Bilha. Ava, would you be able to share your screen? Maybe we can try a breakout room there. <laughs> sure, I can do that right now. Your rectangle is, it's reversed. Hmm. Cool. Alex is trying things out. It looks nice and he's recommending people try it. Try it. Okay, cool. So for the rectangle, I'll put this in the chat as well. You can add this line right here. I'm gonna move this rectangle a bit down. So I have to fiddle with the number here. So I kind of like that. I think that's all right for my house. Now. If I want to change the color now of this rectangle, what do you think I have to do? Can someone tell me? So I'll have to add another fill here. Here's the thing for each shape, if you want to change the color, until I change the fill here, all the shapes will have yellow. Now, for just the rectangle, I want the fill to be. I'm going to make my house pink. So I'm going to write pink here. So you want to make sure if, if, for instance, if I wrote fill pink before the circle here, that's not going to really help me. That turns my sun pink. So you have to make sure that you put the fill right before the rectangle. Hmm. All right. Um, Joel, I also see you're having some trouble. All right. It says it's missing some something and you don't know what. Okay. And you can't copy your code and paste it, right? You're having trouble doing that as well, Joel? Is there a way you can copy the code and paste it in the chat? If not, I will also copy this code that I have here so far. So we always want to make sure that we have our brackets. We want to make sure we have our semicolons. We want to make sure everything that we're drawing is between these curly braces. You hopefully you don't need the play button if you already have auto refresh. So again, auto refresh, as soon as you add a line or co of code or you change a number, it should be updated automatically. Does everybody have a sun? and the body of the house over here. Can people let me know? Here, all right. So Leslie wants me to check this one. Okay, Leslie, I'm gonna comment out my code here. I'm gonna try this out. Okay, so Leslie, I see that you're using the wrong bracket. You have to use an opening bracket. So an opening bracket looks like this. That's an opening bracket. Okay, 
And then the closing bracket looks like that. Cool. I like the, I like how it's looking, Leslie. Okay, cool. Are we ready to move on? You can always look at the guide if you feel like you're ready for the next step as well. Ooh, Alex, I like it. It's kind of the house in the house at night. Now we have to add a roof, right? Or else all the water is going to come in if it rains or the snow, wherever you are. Um, we need a roof for our house. Now, here's the thing. The triangles are tricky. And the triangles are tricky because the triangles work a little bit different. Now, I want you to first, before you even make the triangle, I think um, it's really helpful if we use points first. Now, this one, the triangles, again, take some time, so don't be frustrated. The first thing I like to do is we can use this thing called point. Now, how many point, how many uh, little sharp edges does this triangle have? Can somebody tell me? Three, exactly. So we have three, I'm just gonna show you these points here. You can, I'm gonna put this in the chat so you can just copy it because we are short on time. So stroke, wait, sorry. Let's do that. Ooh. So you can see with stroke, we can add an outline, but I just want you to see this point here right now so I can show you how to do the, I can show you how to do the triangle. Now this point might be really small, but do you see this point right over here? Now, I think it was Alex who might've mentioned this earlier, but if you are familiar with the X, Y coordinate system, if you've learned that, um, this might be a little familiar with, uh, to you. Now, this point here is, if this is zero, it's a hundred away from zero from the right or left, right? So we're doing it from the right. And then also it's a hundred down. Now I'm gonna fiddle and put this point where I would want the, I, I want a triangle that goes from, the first point is here, the second point is here, and the third point is here. Now I'll just show you really quickly what triangle does so that you can understand. If I put a triangle right here, so it starts, if you want to create a triangle, you have to start by writing triangle. But you'll see there's a lot of numbers for triangles. What can they possibly mean? Well, for triangle, you can see that the first one is this point here. The second one is this point here, the X and the Y, and the last point right here. And I'm going to show you that by doing this. I'm gonna put three points so you can see where all these numbers are coming from. And I'm gonna fill this a little bit different. I'm gonna maybe make it purple. Um, and I'm gonna change the color of the triangle to black. Maybe white instead. Okay, uh, and let's change the color of our stroke so you can see it. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Sorry, guys, just a second. I always take a little while to figure out. Mm -hmm. Points. Let's see. So I am going to paste this so that you can move the numbers around but I'm gonna show you how you can use points here. I don't know if we have enough time for it because I do see that we have five minutes, but hopefully for some folks who might be understanding what's happening with the triangle here, 
the first one is your point right here. Those are the two numbers, the X and Y. Then you have another point right here. That's the X and Y for this. Try fiddling around with the numbers and see what happen, happens with the triangle. And in Zoom, if you want to copy a message, you have to just click on the message and then right click, and then you can copy it. So you don't have to do what I'm doing right now, but the only way, uh, the only reason I did it, so is so you can see the different points. So right now, if you created a triangle, no stroke, no stroke basically takes out the outline. So you can see that the three points right here are the three places we had the points. So if the triangle is becoming really hard to do, I recommend trying to do the points. That's what I recommend to some of the students that I teach is first plot out where all the three points are, and then we can try to actually create our triangle because our triangle will take in the same three points. You can see this right here, 250. If I move the point around, you can see what happens. You can fiddle with the numbers of the point, see where it is. So I wanted to make it more like 200. You can see the point move around 300. But just for, yeah, the, the points won't show because it might, it, 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 it might take a little longer for us to figure out how the points work, but you just want to make sure that um, I will send this code in the chat so you can try out how the points work. Um, let me just fix this up and I'll send it to you. Joel, so you can try out the points. Points are a little tricky to get set up at, in the beginning, but once you have them going, they should be all right. And I'm just going to move this back to the top here. So 305, 200, 200, 105, 200. So maybe right now, the triangle isn't quite centered in the house. Maybe you want to move the triangle a little bit. So I'm going to put this so you can try to figure out where your points are. Has anybody figured out the triangle? Maybe some folks like they understand the triangle, they were able to do it right away. Let me know if you figured out the triangle. Feel free to share your code of what worked for you. Cool, so hand, so you got the triangle, cool. If you figured out the triangle, I want you to try to figure out how to create a door. So we've already done rectangle. Samantha, you already, oh, you created the triangle as well. Try to create a door. So if you already know how the rectangle works, try to create the door next. And if you create the door, try to create a window. Nice, Joel. If you want to remove something from your code, like you don't want these points there anymore, you can just put a little slash slash. Feel free to put a little slash slash in the beginning. I don't want the points there. I also don't want a stroke. A stroke is basically an outline. And then the stroke weight is how thick you want the outline to be. So 
I'm just going to move my house a little to the right there. Yeah. If anybody creates a door, let me know. I'm going to help create, I'm going to create a door as well. I'm fine to stay on if anybody um, has something after, maybe like we can have a recorded session, but if if folks wanna stay on as well, um, feel free, I'll be here. We can create, we can make sure we finish this house um, for anybody who wants to, to finish their house here. All right. Has anybody created the door? Alicia, maybe like, uh, I think max 15 minutes, but I think now we know how to create the rectangle. We can create the door. We know how to make a little circle. We can make this little circle right here. I, if anybody figures out how to do the door, let me know. I'll also be creating the do uh, door as we work right here. So I'm going to create the door right here. I'll also send out the code to Alicia afterwards. So of the cleaned up. Um, so and you made windows. Can you send a screenshot? I want to see your windows. I'll also send the code for this um, after we're done. So maybe some people you know, they couldn't figure out certain things during the session. Um, that's totally fine. You can see the code a little later on. So if anybody can take a screenshot and show me what they've made so far, I'd love to see it. So usually when I'm creating a rectangle, I just create a basic one with 100, 100, 100, and then I move, I move it along. I like to kind of just see it as I go. I like to fiddle with the numbers. Oop, that one moves it down. So I know I need to go down there. Cool. I need to go down a bit more, maybe 250. Oop, still maybe 300. Cool. And now I know I need to move to the right a bit more. So let me try 150. Okay, now I think I'm just going to make my door a little smaller. All right, then I have to move this a bit more. Let's try to do two on that side. I mean, if you want your door to be on one side, that's totally fine too. Mm, a little closer. Not quite centered, so I'm going to keep moving around the numbers until I like something. Okay, I'm I'm okay with that. And then if I want to add a color here, maybe I want my door to be brown. Hmm, I'm not sure if I can see that um, screenshot, Janaya. I think Alex sent a screenshot before. Maybe if Alex wants to help folks out and how to send a screenshot in Zoom. If you created a door, try to create a little doorknob.
if you can create a window that's that'll also be pretty awesome really cool sohan i like you got the window in there really cool i want to see more houses i love I love how your your house is taller than mine. <laughs> or or actually looks the same, but I like the green roof. Hey Joel, also if you need help, maybe um I I don't know the did the breakout room work? Yeah, the I will say the triangle is tricky, but once you understand how to do the triangle, so hopefully the other shapes, there's more complicated shapes that we didn't discuss today, but those will become a bit easier too. But my, my, um, my suggestion is always first, just try to keep fiddling with the numbers. Sometimes it's just trial and error. Oh, awesome, Joel, we got, we got your code here. So it's not working, right? So I'm going to try, I'm going to try your code out here. So this, oops, sorry, I have to copy your code here. Let's try this out. Copy. All right, so Joel, I see that you're missing a curly brace for, your draw here so there needs to be a curly brace here and let's try so that should that should uh do the trick so you're missing a little curly bracket at the top and a little curly bracket right on this line here so just after your door you have to remember this curly bracket and this curly bracket let me know if that works for you All right, we're almost nearing our time today. I know we didn't get quite uh, late. Your triangle isn't working. All right, let's 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 try to figure it out. So tell me what you put in your code so far. So just let me paste your triangle so far. Okay, let's let's try this out. All right, let's try out. So I'm going to copy. All right, so yes, the triangle is tricky, but I am going to try to use these points here. Let's see if we can get the points working. So, bum, bum, bum. I'm going to make maybe a. Uh, and I'm going to just comment out these bits for now. All right. So, the triangle is also covering the points. So, let's try to. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to move things around so I can show you how the points work. So I feel like the points will help with the frustration. Okay, so let's create a point. Mm So a little, let's see why this isn't working here. Mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't move that. See, it takes me a while to figure it out too. All right, so we see your first one is 
So the first point here is 15200. So the first thing I like to do is just try to move some things around, right? So the first point, I was like, oh, maybe this this point was a little bit to the to the right here, right? So um, the first thing I did for, I think it was, whose code do I have right now? Late, I think I have your code, right? So the first thing I did was I moved this to the right because this is the first point I'm talking about. Now I also see this point is a little bit, you know, going off the house right here. So I think that's this point right here. So this one, let's move a little, Maybe let's move it. Uh, you had 300, I think. Yeah, or it was 350. So I think 300 is a bit better. So for length, I would say your triangle, after a little bit of fiddling, maybe this one might, might work for you. No worries. Again, it just takes a little bit of fiddling with the numbers. I will just remind that this is the first point right here. These are the numbers for the second point right here. And these are the numbers for the third point right here. And each point, there's a number that moves to the left and right, and there's a number that moves top and bottom. Yeah, Nasser, it's, is it with the triangle? I know with code, again, things get a little bit tricky. We're a bit short on time. So sometimes some of the things that I usually teach take a while, like we take a long time just learning the circle, a long time just learning the rectang rectangle and a long time learning the triangle. The triangle is the trickiest. Um, if you're having trouble with the triangle, just message your code in the chat. I'm, I'm cool to stay on for a little bit longer, but I do have to hop off at 11.30 but I'll help some folks out. If you're having a hard time with the windows, if somebody already has done the windows, feel free to put that in the chat. And again, I will be sending out the code on how I created this. And I think I drew something with Zoom and I don't know how to take it out. <laughs> but I will be sending the code on how to do this. I'll ask Alicia to send it to you all. So you can take a look at the code and then Maybe you want to copy the code to create your own windows, or you just want to see how you can create different things. Um, so you you will have the code later on as well. Um, all right. And feel free, Bill, if you want to help and take some of the, maybe Janaya's, and I'll take a look at Nasser's. I'm going to take some of this stuff out. All right, so Nasser's. All right, so Nasser, you're doing the, is this your code, how your code looks like right now? Cool, Rahan, uh, Sohan, sorry. You added the door handle, nice. Cool, Patricia's uh, shared some code to how to do the window. So, okay, Nasser, this is your code so far. Now we're gonna be creating the triangle. Let's see if I can figure out how to do the points again. So I can, or let's just use this triangle for now. Let's see how this works for you. So it says on line 44. So on 44, we just forgot to do the quotation here, I believe. All right, and stroke weight, we just have to remember have uh, the capital here. And I only know these things because um, just some practice. <laughs> I'm also just going to take this one out just for the moment. 
So with this triangle, this is what we have so far, but you can see your triangle is a little away from your house, right? I'm also just going to change the fill of your booth for now to just, I think you maybe want the black. Um, so we might, you can either make your house bigger or you can move the points. So the first point, I'm going to try to move it down. Okay. So I'm going to try to move your point down. And what I'll have to do is see, let's keep moving the point down. So 300, cool. Now I'll have to move this second point down. Or actually, I think we go to the middle first. So we might have to move this one down. So let's try. Okay. Let's first try putting this one in here as well. Okay, a little closer, right? Just fiddling with some of the numbers. Um, with the second point here, seems like your house might be a little too tall. I mean, your roof might be a little too tall. So we might wanna go with the shorter number here. Oh, sorry, you might wanna go with, the, let's try with 150. I think that's a little closer. Now, seems like your first point still isn't lined up to this part. So again, the first point are these two numbers. So I'm just gonna put in a little helper tip here. This is point one, left and right. Then you have point two, up and down. And that's what these two numbers are. And then this is for point, sorry, point one up and down. All right, and let's move this one a little bit. I think maybe eight. Nope, we have to move it back a bit. 101, and then it seems like we might want to move it up a bit. Eight. So maybe 290. Let's try that. Okay, 290 seems to, to do the trick there. So now this one is the third point here, this one will move it left and right. So let's try, I think we just need to move this one up a bit. So try this. Hmm, let's try and see them out. Okay, a little closer and then maybe a little shorter here. So you can see how this can get a little boring, but if it's your house, you know, and you want to get things right, this can be really exciting. So art, coding with art takes a little bit of time, but this is just when you're trying to learn and you're just starting out, things take longer. But once you get a handle on all the shapes, once you know how everything works, things become really super fast. Um, so here, Nasser, hopefully you can see a little bit about your, your roof here. I'll show you how these points kind of work, but does does that help out a little bit? Yeah. And maybe you want to go to 90. So try to try this out for your roof. Yep, so if with Alex, what you sent in the chat right there, Unity is something to create games with. Um, so it is a really cool tool. It might be it might be easier for some people um, and it might be that some people need to start out with something like this. Hopefully you learn the basics of coding and then you can go on and learn. There's a bunch of platforms to code things and Unity is, something used to create video games. So if you're really into video games, first try to get the basics of coding. And then once you're good with that, you could try to learn Unity to create your own games. And it's something that even the professionals use to create the games that you love to play. Hopefully, if you, if you do uh, play some of the games. Um, I will send the code to how to do this one right here, Joel. But don't worry, 
right after, I'll ask Alicia to send some code. Um, maybe not right after this, might have to hop soon, um, but you will be able to see the code um, for the house. But I will send this one to you right now. Uh, Samantha, are you having trouble? Um, I'm asking folks to send their code if they're having any trouble and then also um, if you want to share what you made. But seems like some folks have dropped off, but um, no worries if you had trouble catching up to some of the stuff that we learned today. Again, um, usually this stuff is taught um, like one at a time. So we don't usually cover all the shapes right away when I'm usually teaching people and um, that's totally okay. We have the guide there and then we also ha will have the code that we're gonna be sending out um, with the house. So you can take a look at that a bit later on. But if you were able to just even get the this part, that that's also super awesome. Uh, you learned how to make a uh, triangle, uh, square, rectangle, circles, and learn how to change the colors, which is pretty awesome. Um, but with that, thanks for helping out today, Bilha. Um, I had a really great time teaching you all and I'm super loved your enthusiasm in the chat. Um, but yeah, we'll have Alicia send out the code a bit later on so you guys can catch up. So no worries. Thanks for everybody for trying out how to code with me. And I think Alicia has a couple of words as well. Uh, wow, like that was so much fun. Uh, let's hear it in the chat for Samina and Bala. Like amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you so very much. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, this was only our first session in our series. Uh, so join us tomorrow at 10 a.m. And um, our next session is um, ex become a National Geographic Explorer. Uh, so we hope you'll join us tomorrow. Um, and I hope everyone enjoys the rest of the day. Thank you so very much. Bye, everyone. Uh, Samina and Bella, do you mind if, um, can we just take a screenshot um, so we can post on social as a thank you, but can we get your house back in the shot? <laughs> oh, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Here, let me share my screen. And as uh, Samina has said, I will send um, everyone the recording. I will send the um the guide and uh, the code. Um, so you guys can all do this again um, on your own. I'll just, Sierra, before you take the screenshot, I'm just gonna unpin myself. There we go. <laughs> and just let us know when you're done, uh, Sierra. Uh, oh, could we have just trying to get every, um, be like in there because of how it's all situated? So if you go to view, Sierra, and go side oh, by yeah, view, speaker, yeah, that should just give you Samina and Abilla. Does it? No, it's still giving. Oh, actually, I think I have it right now. There you go. Okay, smile. <laughs> there you go. Okay, I got it. Love it, love it, love it. Well, again, girls, thank you so much. I know you spent more time with us than you had planned to. So, Really, Lord. really, really appreciate it. Um, it was again so much fun. I feel like we need to do like a part two, part three, part like we could have did the whole break. <laughs> yeah, this, so. it's, it's definitely <laughs> like every day of the week. Yeah, <laughs> one like, shape per day. But even it goes by a lot faster. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so very much. And then when when you get a chance, if you can send me the code, that would be great. And then I'll send yeah. it to the uh, to the kids. So definitely.